Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Now we move on to the next thing, the next but. And this one, I like to tell everyone who maybe didn't get to grow up going to church and finding out how much God loves them. Because this one is a really sweet one. The second one in the list. First you're washed. Paul says, but you were washed. And the second thing he says is, but you were sanctified. Now sanctified is a word from their culture. You have to, you have to understand, before the Romans took over the rule in the world, we had um, a different world ruling empire. It was the Greeks, the Grecian Empire. And the Greeks kind of popularized a lot of the thinking, what we call polytheistic thinking, many gods. They had, you know, Zeus, Hermes, uh, what's the, some of the other ones? The one that, that, that lightning, uh, well, Artemis. Zeus, what is it? Artemis. Artemis. They had the one with the little heel thing, you know, had the problem with uh, Achilles. Achilles. And uh, they had all these different, these different gods and goddesses that they believed in that had these different, you know, ruled different powers or had different, you know, strengths. And, and in the Greek culture, what they would do if you were wealthy is, you know, you, you, you picture in your mind one of those Grecian-style homes with the pillars, you know, and the columns, the big kind of fancy layout. And when you go into their foyer of, the, of a really ultra-rich Greek person, they would have a pillar that was at head height of a man, about six foot high. And it was this really sculpted, ornate pillar right in the foyer. Right in the entryway, we'd call it. You know, right when you're coming into this rich guy's house. And on top of that that pillar, it wasn't to hold anything up in the house. It was a, it was a, a basically a big display uh, pillar. It was to, it was to put something on. Does anyone know what they put on the pillar? They put a, a carving of the god that they determined in their, in their house, was the greatest to them. So if it was Zeus, there's a big idol of Zeus on top of that pillar. If it was Hermes, it was whatever God they put there. And that pillar was called the pillar of sanctification. And in the cult Greek culture, you were only allowed to put, you could believe in many other gods, but you had to put one above all the others. The one you picked, that's the one that got to sit there. Now, ironically, Paul, who writes after the Greeks lose their power and the Romans take over the world ruling domination, and he's, writing this letter to a church in Corinth, which is definitely being occupied by Roman rule. And he says, guys, did you know that you were sanctified? And he uses the very same word that the Greeks used to put on that special pillar that the, the only one could sit on. You were sanctified. You were put on this pillar. Well, by who? Who sanctified us? It, well, you guys know because you can look at verse 11. We were s washed, we were sanctified, and we were justified in the name of who? Of the Lord Jesus. Turn with me to, turn with me to Ephesians. We just had a, a wedding here this two days ago. Luke and Asani got married. He's not with us today, honeymooning it. But um, in the book of Ephesians, we have the, the verses, what the standard wedding vows come from. And, and a lot of folks, they don't know that this is actually a Bible verse. To love, to honor, to cherish, to nourish, till death do you part, all that. That's from the book of Ephesians. But you also know that before it says that, it says these words. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives as what? As Christ loved the church. And it says, also, it says, he gave himself up for her having sanctified, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot, nor wrinkle, nor any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. 
so husbands also ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. For he who loves him, his own wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but he nourishes and he cherishes it. Yeah, we look after our own flesh real good, don't we? But guys, you're supposed to love your wife and nourish and cherish her like she's your own flesh. He says, and just as Christ did his church, because we are members of his body. Now this is, this is, this is where we get the whole marriage thing about. That we were sanctified by Christ, the church. The church was actually, if we could sink, let this sink in, Jesus said, you guys are so special to me, I'm going to put you on this pillar. When people walk into my house and say, what's, what's so big deal around here? They're going to see this church. My bride is seated right here on the sanctification pillar. You say, what's a big deal? How, gals, your husband is supposed to do the same thing that Christ did for the church for you. So people come over. We, in our culture, we say, it's not so much a pillar that they see, but it's a, uh, it's a place, a shelf in the heart, you know, that the girl is, sits at the top position. There's no one. You can't put mama. I, I get in trouble every time I mention this, but sorry for those mama boys. You're not allowed to say, honey, I love you to your wife. And I'll always love you as much as I love my mama. And the two of you share the sanctification pillar in my heart. How good is it going to go for your marriage, if, by the way? Believe me, you know how much marriage counseling I've had to do because of this problem in our society where we don't exactly do it right? Men, you are supposed to put your wife on that pillar with no one else. No other hobby, no other affection, nothing. She gets top billing. Gals, how does it make you feel when your husband, you know that you sit where no one else gets to sit? You're, you're as high. In his heart, you have the top shelf. How does it feel? Is it, is it good? Because it's not actually a suggestion for us men in the Bible. It doesn't say, if you feel like it, you can put her on the top shelf, you know, sanctify her above all other things like Christ did his bride, and that he could present her, it says, without any spot, without any wrinkle, without in all her glory. When, when the Lord presents us as his bride, you know, we're called the bride of Christ, the church. Someday he's going to present us. Is he going to present us and go, and here they are, all the messed up jerks that used to do this and had all these problems and look at all of the scars and the mess. Is that how we'll be presented? Or will we be presented forgiven, washed, sparkling white, you read in Revelation, robes of white. We'll be clean. And he says he's going to present us without any spot, no wrinkle, nor any such thing. There will be no accusation against We're going to be presented like, ta-da, clean, new, fresh, like made new by God. Now, if, if the people who came to visit church found out that that's what we got, that we're looking forward to, I think a lot of them would be going, sign me up. I want in on that gig. I want to be clean. I want to be new. I want to be forgiven. I want to be washed. Oh, there's one more but. Besides being washed and being sanctified, what's the last thing we get? That's beautiful. Justified. Justified means you're just as if you'd never... I always tell the kids in Sunday school, justify is just as if I'd never sinned. I made right with God in his court. You, haven't you heard the story about the judge who had his child that took the court out for a joy ride and broke a bunch of laws? And they brought, he was known for being a tough, he was a strict judge. He was like, you know, wouldn't ever compromise, was always giving the right verdict. And they thought, well, now he's going to have his own kid in front of him. We'll see how he, you know, like see if he kind of, fudges a little because he was known for always giving the exact whatever the law says was the punishment he dealt it out and everybody feared going before this guy 
And his own kid got caught for joyriding, stealing dad's car and going out and doing all this stuff. Ran a stop sign, did a couple other things. And when they brought the kid in front of the judge, you know what the judge did? They thought, well, let's see. We're hoping he's going to, because if he fudges on his own kid, then we know he's not really, like, he, he has favorites. And so he goes, according to the law, you broke this rule, and you broke this rule, and you broke this rule. And he handed down the strictest, fullest punishment. Biggest fine. You know, you know how they can, like, vary it? Like, they could go a little lenient on you on the fine. No, he went to the high side on every single fine for every single infraction. The bill was huge. Kid, you broke it. And everyone was like, Dad. That dad's the meanest judge ever and the meanest dad because it's his own kid. Except that after he handed down the judgment, it says you've been found guilty in this court of these things and this is your punishment. He got up afterwards and he took off his robe, his judge robe, and he walked around his own bench and he reached in his pocket and he opened up his own wallet and he said, I'd like to pay for my kid's fines and he paid for his kids fines the whole the whole thing but he didn't excuse the guilt of the kid the kid was guilty the kid had blown it he didn't say oh didn't do nothing wrong he went no you did something wrong and it's going to cost and he gave him the full the full payment that was due to the court he said this is what it's cost for you breaking the law but then he laid aside his judge robe and took on his dad role. Like, you know, off goes the judge, judge garb and on goes dad hat. And he walks around and he stands before the court and he pays the whole fine and he says, I'll pay for my child. That's my child. And once, it, once the fine is paid, the child is now in right standing with the law again. Because if it's not paid... Well, that's when they issue those things, bench warrants, and some of you guys know about these things firsthand. But, but he didn't want his child to have to go through that, so he made his child just in the sight of the court by paying the fine himself. He didn't excuse the guilt of the child. He just said, this is, what's, this is what would make it right. I will make it just. In the law, in the sight of the law. And that's what a true judge does. But do you guys know that that's what God did for us spiritually? When he took all of the sins that we committed, and it says, and he laid them upon Jesus. And Jesus paid the full amount for every one of us. So that we could be in right standing with God in his rules. I mean, his law, spiritual law, we, we can stand just before God because of what his son did. That's the very same thing. Now, if we would tell the world, guys, we were washed. Now, but we're not just washed. We were set up on this special pillar. I mean, we're like on display. As, as a bride, God loves us so much. He like, is like showing us off. He puts us in this special place. And he doesn't present us all with our mucked up past. He, he washes us clean. And all the stuff, what, what is owed for my spiritual indiscretions, my spiritual joy rides, he says, I paid for that too. So you could be justified. Just as if I'd never sinned. I can stand before God, not because I never sinned, but because his son is the one that justified me. Now, is that good news to tell you know, our friends that they're like wondering, what are, you, what are you Christians? You go to church, you sit on a beach in Rubbermaid chairs. I mean, yeah, it's good wallpaper and everything, but it's got to be something more to this. There's a message here that we get that we were washed. And we are sanctified, and we're justified, and now we can go forward. Next week I get to tell you what we get to go forward to. There's no way. I, I could do it all right now, but we'd be here another couple hours. Because the next part of the chapter is juicy. I mean, it's, it's the good part. It's what do you do now that you're justified and you're sanctified and you're washed. What do you do with this 
this body, this life that you've been given? How do you, how do you handle it? Next week, let's look at it. If you would, do me a favor. Read ahead. To the, how many of you already read this? You, I put it in the bulletin. Please read this for next week, you know. I, I, <laughs> I always wonder, does anyone ever read that thing? So at the top, right above your notes there on the, the right side of the bulletin, it says, please read. And if you would, read that and see. And, and you see if you see where, where it's going. See where Paul's, because he's, he's, he's talking about, here's this church at Corinth that used to be messed up. But he tells the church, but. Now, how'd you like Paul to be preaching the sermon to you? Paul the Apostle, you guys, you used to be messed up. You used to do all these bad things. But. How much do you think he emphasized this but? Like a little, but. I mean, there's three buts in one sentence. I don't even know if I've ever done that. But. You were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and in the spirit of our God. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for being a God that loves us. Thank you for being the God that would wash us and sanctify us and justify us all in the name of your son and in the spirit, Lord, your spirit. Pour your spirit upon us, Lord, even now as we go from this place. I ask that you would put a great outpouring of your spirit on our lives so people would see something in us. They would see that we've been made clean, that we've been freed and can move forward. And for those that are stuck, Lord, we just pray you would let them just open their ears spiritually, that they could have ears to hear, that you want to free them too. You want to wash them too. Lord, if there's anyone that listens to this later through the internet or the radio, we just pray that these words would prick at their heart that they would come to you that they too could be washed and they too could be sanctified and, and justified, Lord. We just ask that in Jesus' name. And everyone that agree with me said? Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? Let's sing a closing song and send you off in the joy of the Lord. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.